Here's a story about a young salmon. It hatches in the cold, clear water of the Cedar River in early spring. If it can avoid being eaten by fish and other predators, it will swim down the river to Lake Washington, along the lake shore to the ship canal in order to reach the ocean. When it reaches the lake, the juvenile salmon finds an unfriendly shoreline. 70 to 80 percent of Lake Washington shoreline has bulkheads, rock walls, or other armoring. It's a similar story for young salmon entering Lake Sammamish from Issaquah Creek. We're concerned about the condition of the lakeshore because we're trying to save Chinook salmon. Chinook are in trouble. They've been listed under the Endangered Species Act. We want the watershed to be a healthy place for people and fish. Roger Tabor is a biologist with the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. For 20 years, Roger has been studying fish in Lake Washington to find out how they use the shoreline. We do uh, snorkeling. Uh, it's a, particularly when these fish are really small in February, March, and in April. And then this time period, basically they're basically from about three feet or shallower water. But during that early time period, they're very concentrated in the south end of the lake. Uh, juvenile Chinook like that really shallow water when they're really young. And so they're going to be really in close to shore. But as we truncate the shorelines, we put in our armoring, um, that's going to greatly reduce the amount of available habitat to them. Along the, um, the swimming beach, which is a nice habitat, but we would see perhaps uh, three or four hundred Chinook would be in that area. They really like this because it's got a nice gradual gradient and it's got a lot of nice fine substrates. Yeah, another thing to keep in mind too, uh, important factor of being in shallow water is that it enables you to uh, to probably reduce your predation risk from a variety of other predators who, are, who don't want to come into that real shallow water to forage. Whereas if you have an abrupt wall and you're sitting there against a wall, it's a much easier for a predator to come in from the deep, a larger fish, than it would be for a large fish to come into shallow water. When the fish are really small, uh, they're very cover oriented, meaning that they, they need a place to hide, probably keep away from their different types of predators. So some type of overhanging vegetation appeared to be quite valuable. Overhanging vegetation is also a source of food. Insects and leaves fall into the water, providing nutrients. We're working with landowners to improve salmon habitat along their shoreline. Green shorelines include removing or setting back bulkheads. Homeowners could add beaches or beach coves. They could plant shoreline vegetation. Homeowners find their green shorelines more attractive. They have easier access to the water. And a beach is safer than a bulkhead for their kids and dogs. A green shoreline also benefits birds and other wildlife. If you're interested in a green shoreline at your home, go to the website listed on this page.